Despite starting just one game for Kentucky this season, Rob Dillingham quickly separated himself as one of the best freshmen and most exciting players in all of college basketball. He matched the highlight worthy handle and bucket getting he'd long been known for with much needed efficiency and substance and rightfully saw his stock take off for it. Now the official combine measurements will be especially important for him, but currently listed at 6'3", 176, Rob's overall creation and three point shooting make him one of, if not the best guard in the class. Now there are are still serious questions about his defense and the offensive level necessary to counter some size concerns, but Rob's dynamic ability to create will likely keep him in high lotto consideration. Now the biggest draw to Rob's game is what he can do as a scorer and self creator off the dribble. He's a shifty and creative ball handler who can heat up as quick as anyone and consistently hits timely shots. He's got a whole lot in his bag of moves from crossovers to between the legs and step backs and seamlessly transitions into pull ups in a variety of situations. He was efficient off the bounce both from three and in the mid range often making tough shots look easy and I think Rob has as much ability as a perimeter shot maker as anyone in this draft and might just be scratching the surface with a lot of this. Edwards floated. Dillingham's got it. He'll pull up. And they've got more shooters, more guys that can really score. That's what we call a hit in a second. A hop and a skip and a three, and he got it again. It works the other way, too. The guys who transfer up to the, the high majors, they're the ones who get more of the attention. Now, because he's missed a couple in a row. He's going to shoot this one. It's good! That is a statement. Dillingham contests it. Threw it up and it ends up in the hands of Edwards who gets it to Dillingham who fires a three. Dillingham working on Vescovy. Oh my. As a driver, Rob is quick and accelerates well to create advantages, but he also does a good job of using slow to fast change of pace. Whether it is starting from a push cross, a quick between the legs, or a hezzy, he often attacks that top foot and counters from there to put pressure on a defense and force help. He's got a lot of variations of off foot layups and floaters to finish, and though the percentages aren't quite there yet, the skill set definitely is. Overall, I was impressed by how he played through that initial contact to get an angle he could convert at, especially considering how he looked there in the past. And heading into a league with more spacing, I think this could shine even further for him, at least eventually. Crosses over James, spins, and scores. It. Dillingham loves to go. Oh, reverse. <laughs> Dillingham, the take, the floater. I'm just a soft defensive play by Kentucky that those plays will not be rewarded in this league. Six different cats have already scored in this game. And Dylan has got Shepard on the wing. Takes it himself. Tough shot. Important sense to get steals like Reed Shepard does. Dillingham, he is a and using both of those pieces as a pull-up shooter and driver, he also has a knack for scoring within the pick and roll. He shot over 50% there right at one point per possession, ranking among some of the best higher usage guys in college. And his feel for punishing unders and drives both from three and the mid-range is apparent. He also has solid setups and does a good job of rejecting and makes good use of the floater when in range. While he is smaller in stature, Rob's creativity with the ball, ability to put pressure on the defense both on the interior and on pull ups and score within the pick and roll gives him a great chance to thrive at the next level in some capacity. Makes the right read there. 30 and blocks, but terrific. Question for Florida. They have had a tough time finishing games. Can they finish on the road wow. in this environment? Chance to regain the lead. Behind the back by Dillingham. Up off the window. Dillingham speed. Finger roll. Yes. Edwards. It's his team at 20. Dillingham. One of the key areas that made Dillingham a legitimate NBA prospect this year was his effectiveness and improvement as a three-point shooter at about 44% total, but also nearly 48% off the catch. Related to that, his ability to play off the ball and add value there made him someone a lot easier to buy as a player rather than relying solely on whatever he can do off the bounce. I liked how well he moved around the perimeter, quickly finding gaps and reading the help defense, and also flowing into drifts in the corner and shakeups out of it. 
and he also did a pretty good job of relocating after passes. I think his footwork is good enough to do some level of movement in the future too, maybe not a ton depending on the situation and offense that he's a part of, but the few opportunities that he had look good and I think it could be a way to weaponize him and open up even more things for him offensively. He has the pieces to be a high level NBA shooter and it'll be important for him to continue in order to maximize offensively at his size. Gillingham tries again. The high archer. Carolina, UConn come to town or a number one or two ranked team. Gillingham. Recognize the flash high low there. Throw that pass. This is where you need Shepard to take over, really. You get a good look here on the dribble drive. And to get them in the tournament, you don't want to face them on your side of the bracket, but you know you've got a chance because of their defensive mystery. Well, such a good driver. Gillingham, corner three. Got it. The other part of his sort of off ball work that I really liked was his ability to attack quickly on efficient dribbles, both against closeouts threatened by his shot or more second side or shifted defense type of looks. Rob was effective getting to one or two dribble pull ups, floaters, and all the way to the rim in a fashion that I think is very translatable to an NBA offense. Of course, he's capable of what he is as an initiator, and it's not like he was over dribbling or anything, but all of this stuff, doing it within the flow and playing .5 basketball, that's what separates a lot of young guards. In and players who are able to stick and to me that movement around the perimeter and just ability to do this is the most underrated part of his game very much the title other than her her squad right now their average margin of victory for south carolina right at now in terms of playmaking, Rob isn't the most advanced, but he gets the job done in a few ways. He also posted a great assist rate in a situation that shared the ball handling duties pretty generously, so the upside is there for him to continue growing as a passer across the board. He's got most of the basic reads down, whether that's hitting the roll or pop man, especially against any blitzes or hedges. He's doing it immediately without hesitation. There is some more that I want to see from him in terms of passing versatility, whether it's pocket passes and bounces in appropriate situations, but the process is there for the most part and maybe you could chalk some of that up to him not having the full reins of the offense and off of his own drives he had plenty of moments of no look drop offs and dishes to bigs and cutters he has a solid understanding of passing windows on those situations on the interior and made proper driving kicks when he drew help one pass away and he's also pretty unselfish as a ball mover despite being a score first guy by nature to kick it out, three pointers AM, blitzing a ball screen out top. While he's not the most polished playmaker, I do think being a threat as a scorer in as many parts on the floor as possible is underrated at times because you can be a passing savant that's a negative scoring threat and it becomes almost useless. So while all of this is important for NBA lead guards and will probably determine the level of initiator he becomes, his potential for growth here is intriguing when matched with what else he can do with the ball in his hands. Three short. Another offensive rebound for Kentucky. They are winning that battle. Shepard wide open. This is the nation's best. Cunningham coming off that screening action on the right side. And they have two seven footers on the floor now. Reeds open for a three, and that's big money. Going right for Kentucky. Dillingham up top. You gotta find, gotta find ways to finish when you have opportunities, because then you get this around the handle. Dillingham extra. Shepard on the chair. They handed it to the big fella. Back in action. Reeves sees a baseline hard take. Now the most obvious area for improvement and likely concern with Dillingham is his defense. Smaller guards always have a tougher time, especially those without top tier physical tools, and that will be the case with him as well. He doesn't offer much at the point of attack in terms of consistently walling off drives or being a pest, and some of these sort of matador moments and a tendency to die on screens without much of a second effort to defend from behind or peel made for some objectively terrible stretches in games and put a lot of pressure on his teammates to make up for it. A second effort and ability to stick in plays or lack thereof is probably the most problematic part of his defense. Now if your five man is Victor Wimbanyama, then hey, it may not matter as much. But for 95% of the rest of the league, it's something that could be an issue and put a team in a bind more than they'd want and also limit what you can do schematically and potentially keep him off the floor. Shot, make him score over without fouling. 
Off the ball, it was a lot of the same. It might have even been worse. As many times as I'll say defense is way more than just effort and engagement, a little more of that would have gone a long way in his case. He had his share of lapses, several of which were pretty memorable, like the LSU game winner, and then the strong side help three against Oakland and attorney. Maybe you throw him some bail and say he was tired in those situations, but regardless, he's got to make a concerted effort to be better here. He had other times where he was late on rotations, out of position, and again, sometimes lacking multiple efforts when the ball got past the free throw line. The likelihood he could get caught ball watching skyrocketed after that and it just made for bad results. I think he's a little too strong for Big Z. Yeah, you know, it's an inexperienced defensively too wow. by Big Z. What a pass. Now positively, he actually had quite a few good moments of ball pressure and I think he moves well enough on the perimeter to at least make some guys work. If he's able to get stronger, I think there's a path to him being relatively decent in this aspect. And I think he did a better job of bringing this up until the early parts of conference play. Now again, depending on where he goes physically and how he measures out of the combine, I think that could shift his floor here a bit in his favor, but the rest remain as things he'll need to get better at. I used to call it the player control file. Used to see guys just put their shoulder down and try to bully into the left. Oh, Hannibal, great move. Getting rid of Dillingham. Tried to leave it for Dillingham. What a great year he's having. Pulling hard take. Dillingham just took the ball out. 13 points, South Carolina lead. And how they defend without fouling. Only one foul. Bodies on the deck. Point games, the, the, the two most disappointing games to me, they did not show up against DePaul. Dillingham to steal. Another area of improvement that stood out for Rob is his finishing. He shot just about 53% at the rim total and oddly enough was actually a bit better in half court than in transition, but he's not physically imposing or particularly explosive in traffic and may need some more consistent solutions to convert at a higher clip. Part of it is just getting better with his left hand and another piece is just continuing to grow using the different extendeds and hand placements that he likes and maybe also playing off to a bit more in certain situations. The good thing is he isn't afraid of contact necessarily. There were some perfect moments of him going right into the chest of the defense and converting through them, but there were also others where he'd contort, maybe get a bit out of control and also miss out on drawing a foul in the process. But this should be an early point of emphasis knowing the backside length and difficulty to be consistently efficient without it or higher free throw rates in the NBA. There's also a level of decision making that I think Rob will need to work through, especially with more ball handling responsibilities. Now he did do a very good job of taking care of the ball by the numbers in terms of turnover, so we're not talking about something that was a huge issue in results, but process wise there's still some fat to trim in some of the shot and driving selection, especially with the long twos and a few errant passes that could come from his frequent use of the jump pass, especially when driving baseline among a few other things. You'd say an M on Saturday for Onyenso. And Mississippi's Dillingham off the back of the Lastly, and lastly, the other side of Rob's ability to get hot in an instant is he would have these long stretches of being a mostly non-factor. I think part of that we can kind of chalk up to the nature of this Kentucky team always searching for a flow, but it's at least worth raising your eyebrows at even if it is nothing given how important this part of his game is to his success. The biggest question will ultimately be whether or not Rob's immense creation upside can get to the level where some of the defensive or size concerns just don't matter as much. Ideally, you don't want anyone to be a negative defender in your lineup but when you look around the league and it's been this way for years if you can produce you'll take that and figure out how to optimize it hopefully with some infrastructure already built in now the draft range for rob is anywhere from the top three to the late lottery and while he probably has the most creation upside in the class the combination of teams who may be a little bit more skeptical of him or would rather take another position make the range a little wider best case i think we could at least see him get into all-star conversations maybe make a couple of things work in his favor as a dynamic lead guard and then on the lower end if the defense holds him back and he's more complimentary than one of your top playmakers some caliber of a microwave scoring guard is pretty feasible for his talent the best Best fit to me is by far San Antonio. His skill set is needed there and he could also use a roster that has someone like Wimby and others around him, especially defensively. After that it does get a bit trickier but New Orleans, Toronto, and Washington intrigue me and if somehow Minnesota or Orlando got into the mix, I'd like those too. 
Comparison wise, I like Darius Garland most as someone super shifty and creative with the ball and can operate as one of your elite options. Now DG may have a real passing edge there, but I think there's a lot of similarities between the two of them. And then some version of a Lou Williams could be another, which he probably ended up being a little bit better than people even remember. I also think you could use Kimba, Brandon Jennings, maybe a little Tyrese Maxey as some references of what it could look like, but I like those two most. Rob Dillingham is undoubtedly one of, if not the best creator bet in a class that is markedly lacking in that department. His combination of ball handling, pull up shooting, and passing matched with a newfound level of offensive malleability put him in top five to 10 conversations. Now concerns around his size and defense will always be in the forefront considering the direction of the NBA and historical thresholds, but nonetheless, Rob's talent will likely be highly valued in this draft. 